Hey, Codebusters fans, are you ready to take your cipher solving skills to the next level? Absolutely. Scioli.tools. It's easy to remember and packed with resources. It's S C I O L Y dot tools. All right, Science Olympiad folks, competitors and coaches, get ready because today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the world of affine ciphers. Perfect for students, A and D, those super helpful parent coaches out there who are lending a helping hand. So let's actually take a peek at what a real exam question might look like. So first up, you'll see a string of jumbled up letters, and that's your encrypted message. It could be a quote, a phrase, and to help you solve that puzzle, you'll be given two special numbers, usually labeled A and B, called coefficients. So different coefficients mean different ways of scrambling and unscrambling the message. Exactly. Okay, so let's break it down you're going to get a formula. It looks like this. X equals A inverse times the quantity Y minus B. First up, we've got that A inverse. Right. It's related to the coefficient uh, A. That'll be given to you in the problem. So no need to calculate it yourself. You got it. Next, we have B. B is also given to you in the problem. Easy peasy. Then we have Y. Y. That represents the numerical value of the encrypted letter. Each letter maps to a specific number. Super straightforward. And finally, we have X. X is the big one. That's what we're solving for, the numerical value of the plain text letter. The letter in the actual message, right? Yep, yep. And that mod 26 at the end. It keeps it within the range of 0 to 25. So, like, if our calculation gives us 28. We just subtract 26. Yeah, get 2. Exactly. So it's like a reset button, keeping everything in order. You got it. There are two super helpful tables that make this way easier. One matches letters to numbers, like A is zero, B is one, you get the idea. The other table helps you find what's called A inverse. It's like having a cheat sheet for reversing the... Instead of doing complex calculations, you just use the tables to find the values you need. Boom, problem solved. Exactly. So let's look at an example. Now, for this puzzle, we're given A equals 11 and B equals 8. And checking our A inverse table, we see that the inverse of 11, our A value is 19. Perfect. According to our table, J is represented by the number 9. So if we plug these values into our formula, we get X equals 19 times the quantity 9 minus 8. That gives us 19, which when we look at our handy-dandy letter table, translates to the letter T. Mm -hmm. So our first decoded letter is T. Now here's a little trick to speed things up. Notice how J always maps to the number 9. That means in our encrypted message, every J can automatically be replaced with the T. The more letters you decode, the easier it gets to guess the rest. Okay, let's try the next letter, H. Our A inverse and B stay the same, and H is represented by the number 7. Plugging those values into our formula, we get X equals 19 times the quantity 7 minus 8. Yep. That gives us negative 19. But wait a minute, our table only goes from 0 to 25. What do we do when our answer is outside that range? We add 26, the total number of letters in the alphabet, to bring it back within our table's range. So negative 19 plus 26 gives us 7. Mm. And looking back at our letter table, 7 corresponds to, wait a minute, H. So in this case, H actually decodes to itself. And that's another interesting thing about the Affine cipher. Sometimes a letter might decode to itself. That feels like a good start. What's next? Let's try decoding the letter A. A maps to zero in our table, so we plug that into our formula. X equals 19 times the quantity zero minus eight, which gives us negative 152. Whoa, that's way outside our table's range. Okay, so we add 26, right? You're right, adding 26 over and over can be a bit tedious. Here's a pro tip. Memorizing the multiples of 26 can really speed things up. So instead of adding 26 repeatedly, I could just know off the top of my head that 156 is a multiple of 26. In this case, if we add 156 to negative 152, we get 4. And 4, according to our table maps, to the letter E. But this is definitely less intimidating than I thought it would be. We just follow the formula, use our tables, and memorize a few key numbers to make things faster. You got it. So let's recap what we've learned so far. We've got our formula, x equals a inverse times the quantity y minus b, our handy tables for mapping letters to numbers and finding A inverse. It's like having a master key that unlocks a whole world of secret communication. Oh, so if our listeners master this, they're well on their way to becoming code-breaking ninjas. Absolutely. And who knows, maybe they'll even go on to create their own super secret ciphers one day. That would be amazing. Yeah. All right, code breakers. I think we've officially demystified the affine cipher today. Remember, you've got the formula, the tables, and some awesome strategic tips to help you rock those competitions or just impress your friends. Keep practicing, or most importantly, have fun with it. There's nothing quite like the thrill of cracking a code and uncovering its secrets. Until next time, happy decoding.